Welcome back to Guns and Coffee, where we have gun talk. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more gun talk. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And make sure you guys check out my other videos as well. There's several builds, modifications, cleaning, all, all sorts of things. So today I have a 450 Bushmaster build. So first thing, you'll see I just laid everything out. So you guys know what I'm what tools I'm going to be using for this build, and uh, first thing we're going to need some kind of tape to tape off part of this lower so you don't scratch it up or whatnot. Um, if you don't care about the finish, then don't worry about the tape. But um, I don't want it scratched up, so I do have some tape. Um, next, I do have here. A punch set. I'm missing the hammer and whatnot. It's actually right here. Hammer. Some of the other punches. But just any kind of punch set. You can get them on Amazon. They're relatively cheap. Um, don't need anything fancy. And then this one came with some pliers. Not gonna need the pliers for this build, but it's kind of nice to have. I do some other things, so it comes in handy. Uh, next, you want to have a good set of um, hex or Allen Allen wrenches. Uh, you could do the single single ones, but I decided to use these. Um, want to have some kind of a block or something to when you need to punch something out, whatnot. Have have this block. This is from Amazon as well, I think. Um, if not, you could get it from pretty much any gun website. But um, yeah, it's just a block. Um, next, some lube, oil. I have this, it's Amsoil Firearm Lubricant. And then your most important thing you're going to need is this is a castle nut screw or screwdriver so it's to screw on the castle nut see how there's three grooves there's three grooves on here as well it's kind of hard to see in light but if i take this out you can see that there's those grooves and this attaches there and you can screw it on so that's what that's for and uh, yeah, it's pretty much all the tools that I'm going to be using. I know some people use vices. You can use a vice. I don't use vices. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I could pretty much build it without the vice. So, um, and uh, yeah, the parts to to build all your stuff. So, a few upgrades I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going to this tinker style muzzle brake instead of the standard whatever this is and uh this is strike industry um it's the handguard um particularly i really don't like and if you watch some other videos i i say this too i i don't like the regular handguards just because you're punching um here let me show you so a lot of these come with this roll pin that you have to hammer in here. And uh, I just don't like doing that. I mean, it's nothing wrong with it. I've never broken this lip right here, but you're banging on it. And if you want to take it out and change it later on, it just... I just don't like it. So I like these strike industry ones. Um, they have four screws. So you're actually screwing, screwing these in. Actually, you can, you're only using three, but I like these because you are screwing instead of um, screwing them in instead of hitting that roll pin in. So um, other than that, um, no, no other upgrades. So, all right, so let's get started. First, what we're going to do is uh, the mag release. 
So you should have a piece that looks like this and a piece that looks like this. And also, piece that looks like this. And I oh, won't need that right now. So we're going to put the mag release in here. So you're going to just drop it down in there like so. Flip it over and take your spring push it down in there and then you're going to take this little switch or button and uh, push the spring down and start screwing. Just get it started. Screw it all the way down until you can't go anymore like so and then what you're going to do is you're going to line this up and push this in. So, and when you do, the other side should pop out like this, and then you're going to start screwing like so. What you want to do is take something, put it in one of these holes, and you're going to push this button even farther in, like so, and continue screwing. several times so what you're looking for make sure this is kind of this is flat right here and then on the inside you'll see this part right here being flat you want to see that sticking out that's where the mag catches so when you hit the button it releases it I think I did a little bit too much back this out a little bit And if you do too much, then you can just back it out. Make sure everything's nice and flush. You push this, this doesn't come out. And then, all right, so what you're gonna do, grab you a spare magazine, slide it in there, make sure it catches, doesn't release, hit the release, comes out. In. All right, so it works. So next, what we're going to be doing is the uh, bolt release lever or bolt catch. So what you're going to be looking for is this thing. That is the bolt catch. And then a little roll pin, just like so. Should only be one roll pin, other than the if you do have one for the trigger guard, you'll have one, but this will be on its own. So, uh, next thing you're going to need is this. And the spring that looks like this one. So there's another spring that looks similar to this, which is this. That is for the actual uh, trigger. You'll see that one side flares wider than the other side. So it's not that one. It's this smaller one that's tightly wound and then the plunger as well. So the plunger, spring, roll pin, and then your bolt catch. So here, I'm going to take this piece of tape and I'm going to put it 
right here because what I'm going to be doing is hammering right here and I don't want to accidentally bang that up so get you some lube put it on the spring and this and uh, some on this roll pin as well it'll just make things a little bit easier to go into place if you want to give that a good coat of oil as well All right. so first thing there's a hole right here you're going to drop your drop your spring in that hole not on the table like so you're going to take your plunger drop it down in there see the small side down like so so basically it's going to look like so and then down in there and then you'll take this bulk catch and what you're going to do is you could take one of these or if you got one of these allens that are single you can stick one in that hole find everything up like so so now everything's lined up and what you're going to do is take the roll pin So if there is a smaller side, it looks to be, both sides look to be the same. But if you have a smaller side, try to push the smaller side in first. And then you're going to take your hammer and get this bad boy started. If this falls out, that's fine. You just get close down to the edge. What you're going to do, take you one of those punches, put that on, and then finish tapping away. Just a tad bit more. Alright. Take this tape off. You can see it's flush. It's not sticking out. Not sticking out on the other side. It's right in the middle. It works. So it's, there is the bolt catch. All right, so next up, we're going to do the trigger and hammer. So here's your trigger. Here's your hammer. Let's see it better there. And then your trigger and hammer springs. And... Let's see. So you got the pins for your trigger and hammer. It should look like this. And they should have notches in the middle and on the one end. They're two the same thing. See that? 
You need two of those. Your disconnect, your little spring, like so. That's the one that's wider on the one side than the other. And, uh, should be it. All right. So, first what you're going to do is you'll take the trigger and trigger spring. And if you look, so this is the trigger spring up close. Not to make, make, make a mistake with the hammer spring. Looks like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to slide this in like so. And put it over that. Like so. So you want to make sure that this piece is up underneath here, not over on this side, like I did the first time. So when you drop it in there, this will sh give it some tension like so. All right, so next we're gonna take the hammer and the hammer spring, and we're going to put this on. So it's going to look, if you can see that, like so. Right on there, like that. Yeah, right. so it should look like that. And uh, when you drop it in there, it'll look like so. But that's how it's supposed to look. And see. All right. So next, we're going to do, we're going to take the uh, spring. So the fat side down, we're going to stick that in that hole like so. And you'll see it doesn't fall out. So you could put that spring in there first and then drop it in there. It's a little bit harder when you you could drop the trigger in there and then put the spring on. doesn't matter. Um, the release, you could put down in there afterwards. So what you're going to do here, line everything up. Again, got you one of these Allens. Line everything up. And then... You'll take the uh, disconnect. You could always give this a little bit of lube as well. Got a little lube on these pins. All right, so you're going to drop this in here like so. So how it's going to look is like this. The spring should go on this little notch and then you'll line up the holes and then you'll stick the pin in. So I'm going to drop the trigger back in there. Make sure it's tensioned this way like so. Push that down in there, get your Allen, line it all up. So what you're going to do is back it out just a hair to where you're just on the one side like so. So the Allen is on this side and on that first, the one side of the trigger and not all the way through the middle. So then you're going to drop this down in there, line it all up, and stick it through, like so. Alright, then you're going to take your pin, and you're going to go, there's two notches, 
one notch in the middle, one notch at the end, and you're going to go the notches that way. So you may have to push this down a little bit just to get some tension and push through. You may have to play around with it a little bit, but it should go through like so. Man. So, trigger is down. Then we'll do the hammer. So the hammer is going to go this way. So you're going to put the tension down and it's going to look like that. So you're going to angle it this way, let it rest on the trigger, and then push down. And yes, it is going to require some muscle. Take the Allen, stick it in there. If you can line it up on the other side as well. There we go. So hammer is in, again, take the pin. There's two notches, the one notch that's on the edge will go in first, going that way. So again, put some pressure on that hammer as you push this through. This can be a little bit of pain. I lost it. All right, make sure everything's flush. And you should be able to cock that hammer back and then put your finger right here so it doesn't hit this front part. And then what you're gonna do is pull the trigger, make sure it releases. Cock that hammer back, pull and release. All right. So some people like to put the safety select in first and then do the hammer and trigger. I personally think that this is a lot easier. What a lot of people is a, has a hard time putting that in is if you look down in there, you see the part of the trigger is in its way. If you cock the hammer back, it goes away and you'll slide right in there. And uh, I just think that that's an easier way. So that's why I put the trigger and the hammer in first and then I'll do the safety select next. All right, so next up is going to be your safety select and uh, you have to put the grip on as well. So here's a safety select, looks like that. And then you should have two springs that look identical and then one that looks similar but it's a little bit thicker if you don't sometimes some of these packaging it's separated this one was all together in case you don't know the two that are the same those are for your takedown pins the one that's similar but a little bit thicker that's the one that you're wanting so mine's black on this in that sense but it's a little bit shorter as well so we're gonna take that and then you're gonna take the plunger so if you look there's three plungers uh, kind of focus there all right so two should be identical those are for your takedown pins and this lower larger one again it's a little bit hard on this camera but the larger one is the one that you're gonna need and then of course your pistol grip and your screw for your grip as well. 
<clears throat> so this one's a flathead. Some are Allen's. There's all different types. So you're going to need a, uh, in this case, I didn't have this in the very beginning, but you'll need a flathead screwdriver as well. So, all right. A little bit of lube. Get it on the safety select here. And then that little notch too, where this pin's going to rest. Alright, so give it a little lube. So again, I showed you earlier. If you have the hammer up, that part of that trigger is going to be in its way and you're not going to be able to get that in. So cock the hammer back and you're clear to go. So I'm going to drop that in there. Now some of your selects are on both sides so you can do maybe on the other side. This one's just the one side so it'll be on your left. So stick that down in there. And if you flip it down, flip it upside down, there should be a notch right there. That's where your plunger is going to go. So the pointy edge should go down. It's not focusing, but you should have a flat edge and then a pointy edge. So the pointy edge, you want to stick down in there first and then what you're going to do is you're going to take this spring you'll see there's a little hole on your pistol grip put it down in there and what you're going to do is so as you line everything up you want to get that spring in that hole push down so missed it this again down sure it doesn't move and make sure you have try to select maybe a little bit stiff but once you do that a few times it should loosen up that's why you want to put a little lube on there make sure when it's on safe you pull the trigger hammer doesn't go put it on fire pull the trigger your hammer goes all right so everything works, everything's good. So there we have that. All right, so next is the trigger guard. So I have this Strike Industry, it's an aluminum trigger guard that I'm gonna be installing. Again, I like it because of the screws you don't have to deal with those roll pins can find the right allen there you go this is the one so don't have to mess with the hammer and punch or any of that good stuff everything just screws right in so it's kind of nice and it's already got blue Loctite on there. So you don't have to put any, they give you an extra tube of it in case you need it, but it already comes with it on. Let's stick that down in there.
So, what I usually do, hand tighten down this one. So, the back one should have two. And then the front one, this one side, there's no, you're missing one. It should be on just this one side. So I hand tighten it down and then I back it back it off a little bit. That way it's kind of loose. That way I could, I could get these other two screws in. Make sure they line up. And start these screws as well. Again, I'll tighten it down and then back it off just a hair. That way it's still a little loose. And then I'll go ahead and get the other screw going as well. That way you're not stripping anything. And then I'll go back and tighten everything down. Don't over tighten these. It's not necessary. There's Loctite on them. So, that one, and the third one. All right. So, there we go. It's a little bit wider. I decided to test that one out. Interesting. All right. So, there we have it for the trigger guard. Next up is the takedown pins. So you'll have two of these, one's longer than the other, and then you'll have two identical springs and two identical plungers. Again, lube these babies up. Like so. We could put some on the spring, as well as these plungers. Actually, they're called detents, not plungers. So I'm gonna do the front one first, which will be the longer one. You're gonna take the, first we're gonna take the spring, drop that in that little hole. So if you look, it'll be on this side hole spring first next you're going to take that detent stick that and both sides should be the same they're identical on the other either side so it doesn't matter whichever side you want to so you want to be careful with this because what's going to happen is there is some tools out there for this but i don't know if you want to spend the money if you have the extra money to spend on it go ahead feel free uh, you really don't need it if you are careful and this thing is not staying on there all right usually it just stays on there but push that spring down a little farther there we go. So you're going to take the takedown pin and then you're going to line this up like so. And what you're going to do is carefully put your finger over here and you see those grooves, you're going to put it down. So you're going to push that detent and push it in the hole and you hear that little click that's that detent riding on that groove so as long as you hear that click you're good to go and you should be able to push this in so it may be a little stiff at first that's fine as you so as you play with this it should get 
looser. Sometimes it can be a little stiff at first. There. There. Then, now for the rear one. So the rear one you're gonna need to get the rest of these parts as well. So what you're gonna do, you could stick all this in there right now. Um, it's probably gonna fall out first. Um, take your buffer tube, get your castle nut. Make sure your castle nut, the grooves are facing this way, like so. See that? And put this on. And then you're gonna take this, and there should be a little notch, you see that? that is going to rest in that hole like so so it doesn't move and then this groove on the bottom should ride on this little groove right there like so okay then you're going to take it should be the last spring and this plunger and you should be able to stick this spring if you look there's a hole you stick that down in there actually here stick the spring down in there like so and then stick the spring down in that hole okay so now that you got that down in there what you're going to do is you could take the takedown pin you'll see the grooves Make sure they're facing this way. So towards this hole right here. That's where you want to line it up at. Okay. Like so. You're going to stick the plunger in there. And you're going to take your spring. Push it down in there. And you should be able to feel it lock in to place. Like so. And what I'll do is I'll just take that spring out for now. And you're going to take your buffer, buffer tube and start screwing this in. Again, I have this spring out. We'll put that in as well. So as you screw this down and get closer to the buffer tube stopper okay what you're going to do is you're going to push down on this and complete that last little bit of turn and it should ride just on that lip so it's not going to come out and everything should be lined up correctly okay and then now, what I'm going to do is back it up, hold your finger on that, back it out just a little bit. Actually turn it, over turn it just a little bit. And then you're going to stick this spring in that hole, like so. And then kind of push it down and back everything out where it's writing take you a little screwdriver or in this case I'm using all right there you go make sure it's flat not bent like so kind of line it up with that back in piece and then push down and then you'll do is screw that castle knot down so your buffer tube should be lined up correctly castle nut should get all the tension you need right there and then 
or take down pin. All right, so everything is lined up. I'm gonna take the caster nut screw driver and then tighten this down. Make sure everything's still nice and tight. Everything should be lined up. Should be good to go. So next you're gonna take your buffer tube or your buffer spring, your plunger, stick that down in there. And you get all the way down, grab you like a punch or something and push that plunger down. That plunger stop down so that way it'll ride and it won't go past that. See that? All right. And next, you'll get your stock. Stick it on there. Extend this piece so you can get the stock all the way in there. And it should lock into place. All right. Good to go. And then take this barrel. Now I got the barrel on, should look like so. And then what we'll do is, I want to loosen this up. Take that off. I have one of these crush washers. Stick that down on there. Screw this tinker on. And if it doesn't line up like this, what you can do you can put it in a vise. I got one of these these things. Put it in a vise, or you could hold it with your legs or whatnot, and then I grab a towel. So I'm gonna give it a turn. So I'm gonna go off camera right quick. All right, so I got this on. Looks good. There we have it. All right, so this is it for the 450 Bushmaster build. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I got a few other things I wanna put on here, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much it for the build itself. So happy the way it looks, looks good. And uh, if you got any questions, comments, make sure you do it below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and uh, for more gun talk. So till next time.